So it was just about two years ago that I decided to take the MSF course and buy a motorcycle for the first time in my life. Now, I'm not a young man anymore. You know, I'm not old by any means, but I do have a house and kids uh, who are very small. And, you know, I'm kind of at the, the midpoint of my life. So I guess you could say this kind of was a midlife crisis. So we're gonna talk about what I chose as my first bike, but first I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the recommendations that were given to me by some, some friends that have been riding for much longer than I have. Then we'll talk about the bike I chose, why I chose it, and if I feel like it was the right choice. So let's get right into it. So I reached out to three of my friends, and I'm gonna tell you what they told me, because it might help you. So the first friend of mine I didn't even realize he rode a bike. We were just chatting and I was telling him that I was gonna take the course. He was like, oh yeah, yeah, I used to have a bike. And I was shocked. <laughs> I had no clue that at any point in his life he had a bike. He just doesn't seem like a biker. Um, so I was, I was shocked. I was like, oh really? He's like, yeah. So I'm like, what did you have? And he was like, he had a Honda Shadow. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I do believe he said the Honda Shadow 750 is what he had. And he said, I had it delivered to my house, brand new bike. And, you know, I had done some dirt biking as a kid, but I had never really ridden a bike, like a cruiser style bike, like what I just bought. And it had been a while, so he was nervous. And he was definitely afraid to ride the damn thing. And he said, I just got on it one day and I started riding it around and it came right back to me and I loved it. And he said, for you, as a first bike, he said, I think something like that would be good for you, like a 750 cruiser style bike. You know, it's very approachable, it's lower to the ground, it's easier, easier to control. 750 is some power, but it's not too much. You're not gonna get in trouble. He said, you're not a kid anymore, so you're more mature. You're not gonna go crazy on the throttle. He said, I think you can handle that. And he said, you can grow into that bike very easily. I think that was an excellent, suggestion and it's not a bad looking bike not by any stretch the second person i spoke to was another friend of mine who is closer to my age actually he is my age right? we're same age and um, i'm not telling you but i already gave you some some information at the beginning about midlife and all that other stuff it's not quite mid but it's close to well whatever so he has a triumph Tiger 1200, which is an adventure touring style bike, which has a big engine, big and powerful, uh, tall bike, but he's also tall. He's, I don't know how tall he is, but he's gotta be like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, something like that. He's not short by any stretch of the imagination. So a big bike like that for him, in terms of size, is like the right bike. In terms of power, he told me that when he first bought that bike, he felt like it was a little bit much in terms of, you know, the power and it was a little intimidating. And he said, matter of fact, when I bought it, I bought a brand new. He said, I rode it off the lot and dropped it right when I got off the lot. <laughs> so, I mean, that didn't leave me feeling like, okay, I, I better run out and get a 1200, you know? But he said he did grow into it and he's happy that that's how he started was with that bigger, more expensive bike because now he's fine with it and obviously he doesn't need to upgrade it. One more person. I spoke to another guy who's been driving like a Honda Goldwing for so many years. I don't know if that's still what he rides, but I know he had that bike for years and years and years. And he told me, he said, Mike, maybe something like a Vulcan 750 might be good for you. You know, it's a, it's a decent size, um, decent power. He said, you probably won't get into too much trouble on it. And I do believe he said, 750 to anything that's a thousand cc but in a cruiser style not a thousand cc sport bike not one of those because that's totally different so he was saying he's saying it sounds big it sounds like you can't handle it sounds like it's powerful but he said you'd be surprised it, it has power but he said it's controllable power and he thought that i could control it so those were like the three recommendations but here's the thing, when you're getting your first bike, if you're not like my second friend who's just buying it brand new and gonna pay 
you know, over 10 grand for a bike, uh, your options are, are kind of limited because you're going to be buying used. And really, I had a budget of like two grand. I didn't want to spend more than that on, on my first bike because I didn't know whether or not I wanted to stay in this thing. I didn't know whether or not I was going to buy the bike and then hate it. And then I'm going to have like this $12,000 bike that is going to be very, very hard to sell and get $12,000 back. You're obviously not going to get that back. So with a used smaller bike, something like a Ninja 250 or, or you know, any of the other smaller ones like a Honda um, CBR 300 or something like that, these are easier to sell back. So when you're done with them, you're not gonna really have a hard time selling them because everybody buys these smaller bikes. So now I'm gonna tell you about what bike I chose. So I wound up getting a Buell Blast. Now the Buell Blast is a 500cc bike. So originally, I, I didn't really want a Ninja 250. I wanted a Ninja 500, but they're really hard to find. And I found a few in my area, but you know, they were going for really high prices. I didn't want to spend too much. Like I said, I want to be around the $2,000 mark or a little lower. So I found this Buell Blast that was about 30 minutes away. I went and took a look at it and it was in really good condition. Um, you know, I started it up, listened to it, sounded good, no oil leaks. You know, suspension seemed to be okay. You know, no broken springs, no uh, leaking fork oil. Uh, you know, everything just seemed to check out. The brakes were working, horn, electronics, everything seemed to be working. So I bought the bike, but I was definitely afraid to ride it home because he was 30 minutes away. I was gonna have to go on the expressway on this motorcycle and I had never been on an, on an expressway with a motorcycle. So luckily the guy had a trailer and he actually trailed it to my house, which was very nice of him. And then I started riding it, man. You know, I got over the fear and like, I think the next day I went out on a ride around my neighborhood and uh, I was like, yeah, this is not so bad. You know, it was a little scary the first two, three times, but then after a while, I just wanted to be on the bike all the time. And this is what I feel about having that smaller bike. Now this is 500 cc. I felt the power around the city from like a stoplight or stop sign, you know, just kind of riding around, being in 50, 50, 50 mile per hour zones and stuff. It was more than adequate. It felt great, had great acceleration. Um, this is a good bike, like it really is. It doesn't get enough credit. People usually jump to the ninjas for first bikes if they want to do a smaller one. but. This one is not bad, and it can be had for very inexpensive prices. So long as you get one that's in good condition, I say if you see a Buell Blast, get it. You know, and it's a first bike, and it's, you know, someone took care of it, get it. You're not going to be disappointed. It's not a bad bike. It is loud, okay? It, it is it's carbureted. It's not fuel injected, so it's a little unrefined, you know, as far as idling goes and everything like that. Um, sometimes your idle might be a little high, sometimes it might be a little low. You might have to adjust it a little bit here and there. But other than that, I mean, the bike is just, it was solid, man. I really, really enjoyed it. And I personally like the way it looks. I think it has a lot of character. It looks like some type of uh, zombie apocalypse motorcycle, you know? Just got, it just has that look. It's got, it looks kind of gritty, and I kind of like that. So. Very good bike, very happy with that purchase. Now fast forward two years, here I am. Um, I have a new bike, right? This is not, this is not the, uh, the Buell anymore. I wound up getting a Honda. And you know, just going back to the Buell, one other thing that I didn't like about it, well actually I didn't say anything about, about it that I didn't like. There's, there's only a couple of things, like, well, like I said, well, yeah, the idling thing, sometimes they idle a little rough. Um, not a big deal at all. Um, if you want to go on the expressway, it has the power, but you're, you're, you, if you're going 75, you're pretty much at the upper end of the bike. You can probably definitely get it up to 90, maybe even 100, but you're like really going to be taxing the motor. And I mean, I don't speed like that. I don't need to go 100. 75 is fine. 
but you're you're taking the motor to like its highest uh, level. So it's like it's really screaming when you're going 75, 80 miles per hour. It's screaming on the expressway. So you got to keep that in mind. So if you're taking like the expressway everywhere and you're doing a lot of longer rides, it might not be the best thing. You might need a little more power. But if you're doing city stuff, I loved it. Man, I mean, the weight of it, it's so light. The thing was 376 pounds. Uh, you know, for a motorcycle, some of you might be like, well, that's, that's really heavy. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking of like a fat man, but if you're thinking of a, a motorcycle, that's, that's really light for a motorcycle. It's, it's not really heavy and it's not intimidating. If you have to back into a spot and you gotta move it with your feet, it's very low to the ground and it's very light, so it's just easy to push around while you're still sitting on the bike, it's, it's just not a problem. Um, I used to do slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot a lot. There would be times where the bike was like almost gonna fall over. And I would just kind of jump off real quick and kind of catch it, uh, you know, cause it's, it's, I'm not Superman. So I mean, it wasn't like all the way over and I'm like pulling it up like the Incredible Hulk and throwing it to the sky. But I'm able to, to, to go a little further with that without getting scared because it's so lightweight. It's just very um, approachable. So I really appreciated that with this small bike. And I think it really helped me learn how to ride a bike without being super intimidated of the bike that I was on. So I don't regret it at all, is what I'm trying to say. Having that small bike for the first two years, I feel was the absolute correct choice for me. For someone who had no experience riding motorcycles, just the MSF course, I would not have felt comfortable on something like a Shadow 750 or definitely not a Tiger 1200 like my friend did. I knew I would have been super intimidated and I probably would have been scared to ride most of the time. I remember thinking to myself, yeah, you know, I want something like a Versus 650, maybe a uh, Suzuki V-Strom, you know, 650 or whatever. That would be great, you know? And uh, it's funny, I saw a V-Strom in person. Now, I don't know if it was a 650, it probably wasn't. It was probably one of the bigger ones because this thing was massive. This was a huge bike compared to my Buell Blast. It makes the Buell Blast look like a damn toy like those old sport bike toys that people used to ride around. That's what it looks like compared to one of these bigger V-Stroms. So that's another thing to really consider. Like if you're shorter like me, I'm 5'9", 31 inch inseam. I can easily flat foot the Buell Blast, no problem. My newer bike, my NC700, I can still flat foot it, but I'm definitely higher up, way higher up. At least, at least it feels like I'm way higher up than I was on the Buell Blast. So that, that makes it a little bit more comfortable as well because you're so low to the ground, um, which again just adds to the control of it when you're like stopping at a stop sign or a light. You can get both feet down on the ground and catch your balance when you're, you're still new to this and you're not good with balancing it on one foot and, and whatever. It just makes things a little easier. So like a big adventure touring bike uh, you might hear touring, adventure touring, and you think, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get something like that. But just consider that those bikes are usually a little higher up than a cruiser or like a standard bike like I have that Buell Blast. So like getting something cheaper, used, small, you know, you drop it, you don't feel too bad. Uh, for me, that's like kind of the move. I think that's the way to go. And then when you turn around and sell it, you're really gonna get all of your money back. And that's the funniest thing. I bought it and I sold it back for basically the same exact price. Like I didn't really lose much. And I, I rode it around for two years. If you already have a little experience, then you know, maybe you should start with something bigger and just kind of skip it. And uh, you know, maybe in the next video, you know, we'll talk about this bike, what I got. This is the NC700X Honda, which I, I am enjoying right now. But I, I have to say, uh, the transition from the, the Buell to this was, I can't say it was rough, but it's it was just a little unnerving at the beginning because this is heavier and I just feel the weight. You know, when I stop at a, a light, it just feels heavier to hold up and it's definitely different and it takes some getting used to once you switch from the smaller to a bigger bike. But I definitely feel 
much more comfortable on this bike than I think I would have felt if this was the first one. But um, yeah, I could have, I agree with some of my friends. I think if I started on this bike, it would have intimidated me at first, but I would have grew into it probably in a, in a couple of months. So, you, you know, it's up to you, but I don't, I don't regret my choice. I don't regret my choice at all. Listen, if you found that helpful, you know, go ahead and give the video a like. You know, subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna do some more of these motorcycle videos coming up, man. I mean, it's mostly about cameras here, but we're gonna see how this motorcycle thing goes. I just wanna share that passion too. Got the passion for cameras, and I definitely am starting to develop a heavy passion for these motorcycles. So I just wanna share that with all of you. So as always, I'm Mike Turner. Thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you soon.